morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from worldwide. I'm Sterling. It's great to have you back on the channel. Uh, this show's being recorded for Sunday, April 14, 2024. As always, these shows are provided for entertainment purposes only. So all the information I share with you comes real time through my guides, angels, extended spiritual counsel, ETs, famous people from history. So for entertainment purposes only. Also, if you get a chance, just to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. All those things help the channel. And for those of you to reach me, just go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the book a session tab. It's very easy. And as of last week, we've also uh, now created a platinum membership level that gives you access to uh, members-only live streams and complete video archives. So that's all available on the YouTube homepage. Or if you're looking for the uh, YouTube membership uh, link easier, you can go to our website, sterlingpsychicmedium.com. There's actually a YouTube membership button that we placed there. It'll take you right to the joining membership screen. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, a lot of questions, uh, you know, and we actually run a contest. As those that watch the show all the time, every time we reach a new level of 1,000 subscribers, we actually give away a free half-hour session with myself. We just crossed over to 48,000 subscribers. So I'm going to announce the winner of the free half-hour session. The winner is Little Chick 73. So that's L I T T L E C H I C K 73. So congratulations, Little Chick 73. Uh, just reach out to our offices, uh, info at sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Let them know you're the winner and give them your time zone, your preferred email address and phone number, and they'll get you all set up. So congratulations uh, to the winner. If you want to enter the contest, uh, we select content. I'm sorry, winners randomly using a computer app from the comments in these shows where we cross over to the next 1,000 subscribers. And those comments starting off the word love are the ones that we know want to be entered into the contest. You do not have to start off your comment with the word love. We, uh, we get asked all the time. It's only if you want to be in the contest for the uh the half hour session giveaway. So hopefully that's a little bit of housekeeping here at the top of the show. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, we had, again, I think 400 and uh, my wife was just telling me she goes through all these 434 unique questions uh, for this week's show. Uh, she then kind of garnered them down to 85 questions. So we're getting more and more to answer each week. We do try to get uh, to as many questions as we can. Uh, but with no further ado, let's get going on today's show. So question 85. Hi, Sterling. Can you please tell me if 45 faces Jack Smith in court prior to the election date? Yes, actually, I see the January 6th uh, federal trial starting out before the election. Not going to be completed. Looks like he will face uh, Jack Smith during that time period. I do see it. 84. Hello, Sterling and team. The number of congressmen in the House of Representatives has been set at 435 for over 100 years. Will the House of Representatives or even the Senate be expanded anytime soon? You know, I, I do see the number of Senate seats and House seats being expanded within this decade, but it could be as soon as another two years from now. So they're telling me within the decade, um, literally we have like less than six years left to go in the decade here, but looks like like another two years here, uh, we'll see an expansion uh, due to kind of the uh, the way the population is building out. Yes, eighty three Sterling. I lost a brother to suicide in April of twenty twenty one. I lost another brother recently on March twenty seventh, twenty twenty four. My nephew Caden also took his life. After watching your show this past Sunday, April 7th, I told my nephew, McKelty, Caden's brother, to watch your show specifically at 1906 remaining, 19 minutes and six minutes remaining. The topic at this point was about suicide. There was a misunderstanding. He watched from 1906, he watched from 1906 from the beginning of your show. All right, starting out earlier, at exactly 1906, you say the word archangel. That same day, he took a walk through the woods and found a disc for disc golf. On it was the word and picture of an archangel. McKelty, along with his dad and brother, enjoyed playing disc golf. I'm wondering if this was put into motion by my nephew and his brothers. 
Yes, this is exactly the way the universe works collectively with all of us. So they they work through me, they work through your guides and angels and your family's guides and angels. And this is actually your relatives on the other side uh, that had committed suicide, putting that in emotion to get a confirming message. So, you know, in an interesting way, we're kind of all tools for the universe in a loving way, uh, but it all works towards the greater good. So absolutely, these are the family members trying to reach across to your family members to confirm they're okay and put kind of a meaningful message together. That's a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that. 82, Sterling, can your team look to see when we'll have TV cables, electricity, and phone wires uh, either eliminated or moved underground. Well, you know, in many communities, uh, power lines, television cables, whatnot, are all going underground. Uh, a lot of wireless transmission now going to be going on through uh, high bandwidth applications. Uh, as far as power goes, we're decades away from that. You know, Nikola Tesla was working on ways to transmit power wirelessly. That's going to come in a few decades. It's not going to roll out uh, worldwide, but there'll be specific applications for it. Uh, so all that's coming. Uh, remember, so new builds, there's some retrofits going on. Got a number of years to go here before substantially a lot of, you know, phone cables, cables are all going to be underground. And some of those then will be transferred over to wireless transmission. So uh, I hope that answers the question this person's asking. 81, hi, Sterling. I was hoping you can share insight as to what happened to Jeff Kale from Charlotte, North Carolina. On Saturday, April 6, he went out on his boat fishing in Oak Island, but vanished. The Navy and Coast Guard had called off the search, but after his boat was found 80 miles off the coast of Wrightsville, North Carolina, they resumed the search, but still have not found him. Will he be found? His name is Jeff Kale from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, unfortunately, no, it doesn't look like he's going to be found. It looks like this was a health event that caused him to fall into the ocean. It might be cardiac arrest or stroke or something. I'm getting a blood condition uh, and a health event caused him to go into the ocean. And unfortunately, they will not find him. It looks like, um, you know, a natural progression of the ocean, the way it works. It looks like they will, they will not find him. But uh, prayers, love and light going out to the family of uh, Jeff Kale. You want you to know he's okay. I, I just heard that. He came running in here and said, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. Uh, well, there you have it. I'm Jeff Kale. 80. Hi, Sterling. Can your team tell us why Chris Bledsoe in North Carolina has been visited almost nightly since 2007 by orbs and several times the lady in white? Is it his mission to help wake up people to the spiritual aspects of life to help us evolve? I get it's more than that, uh, not just spirituality, but also relationship with extraterrestrials. So the lady in white, I'm picking up what they call a tall Nordic, uh, Palladian. Uh, so actually, Chris's part of Chris's role is to help people understand there's more than what you see in the universe. He's actually tapping into extraterrestrials. Um, looks like he went through a big fear spell for a long time, but he's that's part of his mission is to be a mouthpiece or a telephone, if you will, uh, somebody that, they, that people find believable. That's part of his mission is to get the word out there. But I see a lot of extraterrestrial visitations is what's going on here with him. 79, hi, Sterling and team. In many of the shows in the past, you have mentioned that animals are from the angelic realm. What about insects like roaches? Why are they here? Uh, what about flowers and trees, wild animals? What realms are they from? So all uh, all mammals and, and most all animals uh, are from the angelic realm. Not angels, but they come down with unconditional love. When you look down the the animal spectrum, if you will, down the insects, they're part, a very important part of our ecosystem. But still, they teach lessons of life cycle, which is kind of interesting. Um, I know people don't relate to you know insects the same way they relate to elephants, giraffes, dogs. I get it. Uh, but it's all important part of the ecosystem. And interestingly enough, even insects, in some respect, are part of the angelic realm. But it's really to remember all animals teach us lessons. That's why they're here. So there's some life cycle and eco larger ecosystem lessons that insects, for example, play. And I think that was all, we were asking about flowers and trees. Well, we've talked about that before, but trees, uh, flowers, plants, they all communicate a lot of times to an underground communication channel. So they're, they're very, very spiritual, very connected, like large antennas to the universe. 78, 
Hello, Sterling and team. If we have the potential to reincarnate multiple times on Earth, can we ever choose to have an easy, carefree life where we just want to enjoy the beautiful aspects of life and not endure challenges, hardships, and or serious illnesses? You absolutely can. Uh, there's free will on this side of the universe and free will on the other side as well. Uh, however, uh, it's like the yin and yang of the universe. You don't really grow unless there's some sort of a resistance against it. It's like the way we learn in school, right? You put yourself through massive study and tests and exams, or, or if an athlete, you practice endless hours to kind of build up muscle strength, muscle memory. So, you know, a lot of the, the trauma sometimes, the lessons we learn down here are the things that build our spirit. So you could certainly come down, you have free will, but a lot of people choose, especially older souls, will choose to come down here and experience kind of, you know, harder tasks. Uh, so again, free will, uh, but a lot of time people look at things differently when they get on the other side and then kind of make a different decision about what they want to experience when they come down here. For, for learning. 77. Hi, Sterling and team. I have an upcoming biopsy that has me somewhat fearful. How can we all navigate the fears that crop up in our lives and learn to trust source? You know, I find um, the biggest gift and trust you can give your angels and guides on the other side is to push forward through fear. Lean into it. Many times, you know, fear, I always refer to as false evidence appearing real. People spend too much time thinking about it. Sometimes the biggest gift we can give ourselves and to our angelic team is to push forward, push forward to fear. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're fearful of something that doesn't exist or would, won't take place, or there could be an important lesson there. So the biggest message I get from my team to pass along person assets, push forward, lean into the fear and you'll start to actually build strength and see how you're, you're kind of limiting yourself and kind of the, the way you're moving through life. Uh, think about it, my guy just saying, think about it like diving into the ocean head first and think about the cool, soothing waters and not being afraid necessarily of undercurrents, riptides, waves, diving into the water, dive in, lean in. Uh, 76, Sterling. Will Jim Bartlett, GOP-nominated new, newcomer, win his run for the position of North Dakota Superintendent of Public Instruction? It does look like it looks that way to me. It looks like, uh, I'm not following politics in this area, but it looks like there might be a lot of Christian nationalism going on, uh, some of those kinds of uh, things. It looks like um, this individual does win, Jim, Jim Bartlett. Yeah, it looks like he wins. 75. Sterling, what does your team of extraterrestrials look like? So I, I work with thousands of extraterrestrials across many different species, but primarily uh, a lot of Palladians, or what they also refer to as the tall white Nordics, uh, Arcturians, and also uh, the mantis beings. We call them the praying mantis beings. These are very highly elevated extraterrestrials. They stand very, very close to the one source, one force. So primarily three different species, but thousands of them. And they all have different uh, characteristics and things that they want to teach or explain. So it kind of depends on what topic comes up, uh, depending on who will uh, ask to step forward, come forward, and, and relay the information. 75. Hello, Sterling and team. I read a book many years ago called The Contact Has Begun by Philip Kraft, or yep, C R A P F. Uh, he was a journalist for 30 years and spent much of his career at the Los Angeles Times. In 1997, he was abducted by the Verdants, uh, V E R D A N T S, Verdants, Verdants, who wanted him to write the book uh, that he subsequently did write. Part of the book talked about how the Verdants said they would introduce themselves to the world in the coming two years or so. They said they would have done it sooner, but Earth was much too violent at the time. It never happened, but you have read that extraterrestrials will soon become more visible and part of the public consciousness. Did Philip Kraft have his experience, have this experience? And aren't we still too violent of a planet to warrant an introduction to higher uh, intelligent beings? It appears this individual had contact with extraterrestrials, but it looks like they're of the, the, the grays, we call the grays. And um, 
it's interesting. Yeah, society is somewhat violent now, but now is a time in history, I'm told all the time by my team, where uh, they really want to save humanity. They don't want anything catastrophic to happen to humanity. So this is the time right now, the few ne or next few years here, where it's going to be much more prominent to everybody in the public. So it looks like he had the experiences. Uh, looks like these Verdans uh, were uh, of the greys, part of the greys, not the hybrids, uh, different types of gray extraterrestrials. Looks like they were shorter or smaller in stature, a few feet high, something like that, maybe three, four, five feet, three, four feet. Uh -huh. So it looks like I, I can I can uh, validate. It looks like he had the experience, but that's it got delayed. But now it's going to come forward for reasons that again they don't want to uh, they don't want anything catastrophic to happen to humanity. Seventy four, Sterling and team. I have relatives that have had to be on ventilators, and they have said it was a terrible experience to be intubated. Since this is so common, do you see a time when getting oxygen to the lungs? isn't so traumatic and arduous. I get, I get yes, uh, within a decade, they're going to have new technology using sensors on the body to help regulate oxygen. So uh, not a doctor here, but I, I think you know, part of this is, is getting oxygen into the lungs. And so I see something about sensors being able to control muscular activity or lung activity within a decade. So that means that, uh, well, inside of this decade, uh, now they're saying it's about five years out, you're just gonna start to see new technology that's gonna help with this. You won't have to physically uh, intubate somebody. Huh, interesting. 73, I had a question about hybrid ET children. Your explanation that they were being placed in adoption situations without necessarily any disclosure of their origin. This mirrors the stories of Superman, the people of Zena, uh, Zena Henderson, and Escape to Witch Mound by Alexander Key. I always felt there was something true about the latter of these. All feature extraterrestrial children with superpowers who are placed in adoptive homes or adopted homes. Uh, are these stories part of the lore presented to prepare humanity for full disclosure? Yes, absolutely. All this uh, that comes out through a lot of uh, entertainment media channels, uh, is meant to kind of give people a little bit of a basis of understanding um, as they start to step into reality into a lot of these things happen. So yes, a lot of times these things can come out through fiction, you know, movies, and as as they start getting rolled out, we get closer to all, you know, full disclosure, then people already have the idea in their mind, oh, that is a possibility. I remember, you know, seeing the movie or, or hearing the stories. It's absolutely part of the truth. Absolutely. Okay, 72 in the countdown. Hello, Sterling. My question is about the Iowa governor, Kim Reynolds, a Republican. Will she get voted out and will all the awful laws and changes she created be unraveled in the next governorship? I, I could yes um, that she will be voted out in the next governor election cycle, which I'm getting is something like 2026. Um, so, yeah, it looks like she will get voted out. But again, not till the next election cycle in 2026. 71, high Sterling, if extraterrestrials have been around for millions of years, why isn't there more evidence around to prove to the scientific community how all th these global massive structures were actually created? Well, there's actually plenty of evidence around the world. A lot of scientists have it, uh, but they don't share it. Um, the, the larger part of the scientific community is not ready for a lot of things that defy physics. So if you look at the way, way people understand quantum mechanics, uh, that's physics of the atom, uh, the, way, uh, the way the world interacts uh, when you go faster in the speed of light. Einstein was on top of a lot of this in his theory of relativity. A lot of this evidence is already around, but the world is just catching up with understanding how all this uh, comes together. So um, it's around, um, it just hasn't been shared or accepted by the larger uh, community of humanity. Mm -hmm. 70. Hi, Sterling. Several years ago, we lived in St. Petersburg, Florida. One night, my daughter, age four, called me into her room. She told me about the man in her room who was half wolf and half man. She said his head and top part of his body was a wolf. Uh, I was raised in metaphysics, so I didn't just dismiss her story. Items would disappear, then reappear in a different place or not reappear at all. Strange noises, heavy energy. I finally started telling this being that he was not going to get anything from us but love and light. 
Uh, we would no longer fight him, just love him and surround him with light. He eventually just left. Then one night, my daughter saw him walking down the street away from our house. What was he? This is an individual that lived in that location uh, maybe 100 years ago or 20, 200 years ago. They're saying it's, it's kind of it goes back in history here. But an individual that lived there that had a rather traumatic death. Um, I don't get the, the wolf connection. It's not coming through for me. It looks like uh, sometimes people can mask who they are uh, from the other side. Uh, but this looks like an individual. Now, it looks like he will leave or did leave, um, kind of disgruntled. Now, not stuck on earth, but, you know, a lot of times if people had maybe a disruptive uh, departure, they may come back and visit a lot or something about the location uh, they still want to stay connected to, but aren't stuck. Uh, but that that's what it was. Nobody related to your family, just an individual to live there in that location. 69. About five years ago, I was in the hospital for a surgery. While getting ready to leave, I saw the silhouette of a woman through the curtain, helping the woman in the bed next to me. No words were spoken. I knew in that moment this was a spirit. When the nurse came in to give me my discharge paperwork, I asked her if this hospital is haunted. She said, yes, this floor is very active. Who was the woman I saw, and was it specifically meant for me to see her, or did I see the other woman's angel spirit guides there helping her out? Uh, you witness one of her angels connecting with her, coming around this person next to you. Um, very common in hospitals. A lot of hospitals are very active with people's birth angels and guides because a lot of the, a lot of trauma in hospitals. Um, and you're somewhat perceptive, which is why you saw that that woman's angel, whatever spirits. Yeah, so uh, very common. I see all when I walk into hospitals and lots of different types, even hotels. I do see a lot of uh, spiritual energy walking around. So not uncommon, but you witness one of her angels. 68, blessing Sterling and team. I have been hearing members of my spirit team call my name for many years. It happens when I'm reading, driving, or out working. I typically stop and ask them who they are and what do they want to share. I don't get anything after the contact. I even take time to meditate and quiet my mind. Clear, concise, consistent, like you've taught us. Uh, what more can I do to enhance to, to clarify or get better communication? Well, the name calling is actually trying to get you to connect with them. Now, this person is referring to when I talk about manifesting, there's core techniques I call you have to be clear, concise, and consistent when you're manifesting. That's different than when you're, when you're learning how to communicate with your angelic team. So when you're learning to communicate with your angelic team, it's more about being in the full waking state. And I recommend people, a very simple homework assignment, sit down for five minutes a day, minimum two weeks the first time you do it with a journal and a pen and ask your primary angels and guides to please step forward, ask them to reveal any messages they have for you. But what that does is that works your mind muscle. So it, you aggressively, you're pushing it out there. You say the words out loud. It's not meditation. Uh, but anyway, the clear, concise, consistent are, are part of another discussion involving manifesting, and there's different techniques. So I feel like whoever asked this question, we can all connect to the other side, even if you feel like you're a little blocked. Um, if you work on it long enough, that mind muscle kicks in, that imagination section of the brain, and you actually start to hear at the very least rushes of thought. And that's your first entry back in a clear audience. So hopefully that helps. 67, hello, Sterling. One of the greatest unsolved mysteries in Australia is what happened to the three Beaumont children who disappeared from the beach in South Australia several decades ago. Despite intensive efforts, no trace was ever found of them. What does your team say about their disappearance, and will this ever be known? I think I read on this before, but I'm getting they were abducted, unfortunately, by a sexual predator. So some of you even know him by the authorities, a sexual predator in the area that even commit other crimes. Um, it does look like within the span of another one to two years here, they're going to find some DNA evidence. Uh, or some bones, uh, but uh, this is a sexual predator incident. And I do believe even this person was even written up in the newspaper. So authorities may have already, I mean, again, authorities may have already interviewed this person, didn't realize who they were talking to. Uh, it's going to get solved. Um, it does look like some portion of the remains will be found. It, it will be solved. And I'm getting just 12 to 24 months be a big breakthrough here. Okay, 66 in the countdown. When extraterrestrials are revealed to us, will our mental health suffer because of some of us can accept the reality of their existence, or will we achieve a greater understanding and appreciation of our roles within our universe and our connection with the one force, one source? 
It'll be a gradual acceptance by humanity. The majority of the population will ease into the understanding. It'll be like, you know, releasing information about uh, new galaxies discovered. Uh, but slowly but surely, it'll start to uh, shed new light on the way people view religion and a lot of the way the, the universe was created. Yeah, so it's going to be somewhat stressful for some individuals, but it's going to be a gradual rollout. And a very important, this is a very important time in history uh, for humanity and humanity's evolution. So some, some individuals will require extra levels of support, absolutely. 65, hello, Sterling and team. In the late 1970s, I was a teenager working at the local radio station in a small town. On a summer night, someone called in to report strange lights floating on the horizon. I went outside to look, and there were three clusters of three red lights floating and a fourth one not far away. I would estimate them to have been two to three miles away, and you could not hear a noise. Maybe foolishly, I announced it on the radio and caused a bit of chaos in town. So, 45 years later, can you settle the question, what was this? This was a series of extraterrestrial drones scanning the area. So there's a lot of extraterrestrial species that use drones to scan certain areas of Earth, and they might be working in conjunction with their military. Uh, but th these were extraterrestrial drones you witnessed. And, you know, uh, these have been around for many, many decades. We were talking about here in the 1970s, but um, even hundreds of years here. So congratulations. You saw some what they call extraterrestrial drones doing some surveys. 64, hi, Sterling. Thank you for all you do. Why did the Supreme Court agree to hear 45's immunity case? Well, factually, they agreed to uh, receive it or review it because some of them, not all the Supreme Court, some of them are compromised. And I'll, I'll leave it up to you to uh, understand who's compromised. Uh, but they have uh, a debts to 45 and they, they're a compromise. So that's why they agreed. Now, what's interesting is I've always seen that they were going to go through the motions to say accepting the case or reviewing it, but then somewhat quickly uh, side with the lower courts, the local DC court and, and all their detailed findings regarding presidential immunity. He's not going to get immunity. Uh, but the question here is, you know, why did they take the case? And I always get there's a certain faction, a certain portion of the Supreme Court that is compromised. 63, hello, Sterling. I am a devastated Arizona resident here. Huge loss for women's rights today, going back to the 1864 law against abortion. What is in store for Arizona and women's reproductive rights? You know, I, I see this going through many legal cycles. So back and forth, back and forth. But within 24 months, uh, under the next Biden administration, I see new federal laws or in a Roe v. Wade uh, being reestablished effectively. So there's some federal rulings coming here. They're going to override some of the things happening in the state. And then eventually, in the same 24 month period, it looks like the state, it looks like Arizona is going to go purple to me, is going to kind of go back and correct some of these things. So a little bit of a hard road here over the next two years, a lot of back and forth, a lot of legal cycles around this, uh, but it's going to get taken care of. 62, Sterling, now that Arizona has passed a near-complete abortion ban, will the state turn the state blue for the presidential election? Interesting. So kind of a, a tag along here. Um, you know, it does look like uh, Arizona is going to turn purple, and I'm going to limb here. It looks like Arizona may very well uh, vote for Biden, is what it looks like to me here. So, uh, I mean, that, that that's what they're telling me. Absolutely. 61, is the reason we can't remember our past lives or our experiences in the spirit world due to the density of this existence, or is it to prevent us from learning an experience we choose to go through? Seems a bit unusual that we can come here to become more spiritually aware, but can't easily remember our true spiritual experiences. So I'll tell you, it's not true for everybody. So a lot of people do remember past lives, past life experiences, the kind of the things that they taught them. Uh, so it's not true for everybody, but it is characteristic of the number of reincarnations you've had here, what life lessons you want to go through, what you need to learn. So if you're supposed to learn a certain lesson, um, you're right, you may not remember some of the things you learned in a prior lifetime because that, that would then take away from some learning you're going to have in this life. You know, it's a rather complex layering of the way we put together our life path blueprint and the way we get the experience down here 
Earth is a very unique school, so unique uh, guidelines in which we put together to get those lessons understood. Uh, but I would just say as a footnote, there are many individuals that can recall their past lives and experiences. Not everybody, uh, but there's always a reason for it. It's always part of a larger plan. 60. By the way, my team just reminded me. The reason, so some people that do remember their prior lifetime, some of them are meant to be teachers and healers. So they'll take that experience and demonstrate to others, here's what I recall, here's what I learned. And so it's it's actually part of also a teaching and learning experience by, by some that are come down here with that gift of remembering past lives. 60, a few weeks ago, an appeals court lowered 45 bond requirement in the New York fraud case from 454 million to 175 million with no explanation. What was the judge's rationale for this? Do they expect 45 to win or partially win his appeal of the original judgment? Uh, what I get is the judge or the legal team involved in that case, that fraud case, want to appear completely non-partial. So, for example, they're, they're trying to walk a very fine line here to make it look like they're not being overly harsh on 45, the former president. Um, so they're, they're trying to strike a balance there, and that, that's what I get. Um, and no, and I, the question here is I, I don't get that they made the decision because they felt he was going to win or whatnot. It was just we need to show that we're doing everything we can to kind of bend over backwards uh, so we're not being you know, overly harsh and trying to be impartial is what I get from my team. 59, dear Sterling and team, black holes in space seem so sinister. Humans understand they attract everything around them, but is that how they really work? What do your extraterrestrials think of them? How they work? Uh, what do they think? So black holes, we covered this before in other shows, but they're, they're formed with the massive collapse of stars. And so they create a tremendous amount of gravitational pull, pulling everything around them. But the collapse of the star, and sometimes even star systems, but more specifically stars, um, it actually does create what they call portals in the universe. So a lot of extraterrestrials utilize them as shortcuts. It's almost like the freeway to get between galaxies. So it, it is true, you know, black holes, a lot of scientists have studied them. They're very unique. But the one thing they do in the fabric of space is they open up portals to other times, other locations. Uh, so extraterrestrials are very aware of them and how to utilize them. Interesting, you know, Star Wars reference when they, they talk about going to hyperspace or whatnot. Um, yeah, so some of that is that the black hole understanding around around those kind of movie uh, movie clips. Fifty eight. Hello, Sterling. The helicopter, airplane, light bulb, looking hieroglyphics in Egypt. What are they actually? Thanks for checking into this. Um, they're all basically anti gravity propulsion ships. So uh, humanity didn't really understand what they were at that time. So uh, the, the hieroglyphs that developed from the experiences. Uh, created those kind of higher goals. But this is all based on anti-gravity propulsion ships devices. 57, hello, Sterling and team. I live in Alabama and our officials are now saying Biden may not make it on our ballot for November. Will Alabama or any other red state be able uh, to stop Biden from being on the ballot? I see uh, the Biden-Harris ticket will eventually be on all state ballots. I do see a lot of back and forth. Uh, in a similar way that we were, we were seeing that with 45, you know, for different reasons. Uh, but eventually, I, I see like the Biden-Harris ticket, if that's what we're asking about here, uh, will eventually be on all state ballots. And I'm even getting there, even, even if there's a mechanism, uh, like an extra mechanism they have to go through to make sure they're on the ballot. So in the end analysis, they, they'll all be on the ballot. 56, hello, Sterling and team. You have said that extraterrestrials are sharing technology with governments throughout the world. Is some of that technology being shipped off by a few corporations so they can personally profit from that technology at the expense of humanity? Yes, absolutely. There's a select number of military and uh, aerospace vendors uh, that do have this advanced technology. They have reverse engineered it. They're using it uh, in commercial ways uh, to gain profit. That's very true. All this is coming out over the next few years here, uh, but nope, that's it's absolutely true. 55, thank you, Sterling and team. Recently, I wrote my sister's eulogy, and it felt like an automatic writing event. I uh, had very few edits. Words just flowed to me. Is this a one-time event, or do we have this type of skill forever? 
Well, first off, this was your sister communicating through you. Absolutely. We all have the ability to do automatic writing. Now, it's nothing that's, you know, I'm going to call it woo-woo. When you connect with your angelic team or you open up that channel in the brain, that imagination channel, the one that all creative people utilize, the way information flows that channel is, does feel like automatic writing or the thoughts just come to you or the song that you write. So this doesn't have to be a one-time event. Um, it looks like your sister was putting extra energy behind you to give you that information. You could develop the skill in the same way we learn how to talk to our guides and angels. Once that channel is open, you can utilize that for all sorts of things. And, you know, automatic writing is one of them. So you're not closed off from it. 54, why do extraterrestrials have humans working on board their ships and how are the humans compensated for their time? So humans are not working on board uh, extraterrestrial ships. There are hybrids. Uh, there are many scientists that go back and forth uh, on ships without working on board. They're, they're spending collaborative, there's collaborative engagement, sharing of technology, but not necessarily uh, working on board the ship, not being compensated. No, that, that's actually not true. No. Okay, 53 in the countdown. Sterling, you have said when working with spirits, we should ask for white light of protection before starting. Why is it necessary to ask for white light of protection when we have a team of angels and spirit guides assigned to us? Please explain the significance. Well, that's easy. When you start doing any kind of spiritual work, you look like a flashlight to the other side, like a beam of light. Think about the beam of light coming off the Luxor Resort in Las Vegas. So a lot of spirits will come running. And a simple prayer of protection is not to protect you from evil, but it's really saying, I only want the highest level energy, my team, my angelic team, those I want to speak with to come through. Um, it's like opening up a door to a concert and allowing everybody to flood the gates. So that's all it is. Um, it just, you know, it prevents everybody from running at you uh, and gives you some kind of, a little bit of control over the experience. 52, dear Sterling and team, I slightly get jealous because people are experiencing or getting visitations or something that is not of this world. And I'm wondering as much as I pray and hope for, I don't have these experiences. Why is that? Well, it, it's simply a lot of times you're not ready at this point in time to, to visit or to experience those things. So it's a gradual leaning into. You, you, whoever asks this question, you're going to get there. Um, and remember, they always start off when you're when you're redeploying the gifts. We're all born with psychic mediumship ability. But as you start to kind of redeploy those gifts in life, what happens is it takes a little while to kind of ramp that skill back up. That's why with Claire Audience, for example, when you first start working on that gift, it starts off in rushes of thought and then can move into discrete voices you can hear. Say anything like clairvoyance, being able to see. Maybe you might just see a slideshow or an image once in a while, but as more you work with a gift, you can at least start to develop, maybe start to see a little uh, like a fast commercial or a fast video clip. So I would tell you know, this person, don't get discouraged, work on the gift um, and it, it will come to you. Those The things that you need will start coming to you. 51, hello, Sterling and team. The Supreme Court is hearing Fisher versus the United States this week that seeks to remove the obstruction charges from the January 6th rioters based on 245 appointed judges trying to split hairs to help mitigate the consequences and dismiss them. Will the Supreme Court rule in favor of the DOJ to uphold the obstruction counts? Yes, I, I do see the Supreme Court will uphold the obstruction counts and won't dismiss them or mitigate them or minimize them. Yep. 50. Hello, Sterling. 11 Republican states are suing the Biden administration over student repayment loan plans launched last year. Will they be successful in blocking the repayments? No, not a, not in the long run and not even in some of the short run here. So I know that a, another, a very large, significant amount of student debt was forgiven this past week as well. Um, I do see challenges going on back and forth, but in the long run, means over the next year kind of a thing, two years, uh, that these challenges won't be successful. So the, the, the student loan repayments will stand. Um, it looks like kind of throwing, you know, mud at the wall, so to speak. 49, greetings team. Years ago, I heard a famous psychic mention that humans will live in dome cities due to the environment. This psychic has long passed away and I haven't heard, I haven't heard it again. 
with home prices continuing to increase, I'm concerned about buying and not enjoying the home for generations to come. What is the likelihood of dome cities happening and where will they be located? I've read on this many times over the years. Um, as humanity evolves, you're going to see uh, new cities underground, underwater, and some dome cities as well. Uh, that's going to happen due to uh, population sizes and environmental conditions. We have many decades to go. Remember, the, the, we're all going through a 2020, a year 2020 to 2050, three-decade shift. But as you start to get out towards 2045, 2050, you're going to start to see a lot more uh, living situations that are underwater, underground, and even some dome cities. That's all very true. It's just part of the expansion, the evolution of the universe and, and Earth. 48. Hello, Sterling. Israel is getting ready to go into Rafah in Gaza. Will they find the hostages and bring them home safely? What will be the final outcome of these hostages? Will Hamas finally be taken down? Hamas will finally be mitigated, for the most part, looks like by October of this year, October 2024. Unfortunately, uh, I have to share with you that a large number of the hostages are, are, are no longer living. Um, and so it looks to me like literally like half uh, may not be available. So I think the person is asking, will they be released? Um, there's like a small contingent of hostages that will be released here over the next few weeks. But in terms of how many hostages are remaining, it looks to me like uh, about half. And I'm sorry to have to relay that information, but uh, you know, it's just a, it's a horrible situation going on over there. We sent a lot of love and light to all the families uh, that are affected by these challenges uh, in Gaza. Absolutely, yeah. 47, love to Sterling and team. You have talked many times about someone's exit point. This is part of the Akashic Records. Is that time like our birth and that we are born at a certain moment in a particular location or is there a window of time to enter and exit, given the soul some free will with that experience? You know, uh, birth is is very specific. Uh, the death point, you actually do pre-select your death exit point. But what I, I've seen over the years here, working with thousands of individuals, is that sometimes you have what I call a plus or minus two-year window. So I've seen some individuals, let's say, in, in major trauma and want to leave right away. It's like, I don't want to stay any longer. I've seen other individuals drag it out by as much as two years from, let's say, what the exit point was because uh, they're worried about chaos in the family or something of that nature. So they hang on here. So uh, for the most part, I've, I've seen a little more fluctuation in the e actual exit point. But remember, you can't get off the planet unless it's your exit point. So, uh, so hopefully that helps. 46, Portland has some of the highest vacant office space in the country. What will become of this space in the future? Uh, well, I, I get this is going to lead to substantial bankruptcies for a lot of real estate owners, developers, but I see government, federal and state government funding coming in to repurpose some of these uh, buildings as, I'm going to call it lower-income housing, something of that nature. Uh, a good chunk of it is going to convert over to some sort of new residential living, and it looks like there, there's be an economic benefit to people coming then into the state, availability of lower-income housing contributing to more of a green economy. So all this evolution around Portland looks like it's going to happen in the next few years here. 45. Sterling, I think I've heard you say that we predetermine our life path and even our death, okay? Although I do not feel my healing abilities are very profound, I still feel drawn to learning and practicing different healing modalities. My question is, if a person's path is predetermined, what role do healers' efforts play? I'm only kidding myself, thinking that I might really be of any help at all. Well, everything we experience in life is all part of our life path blueprint, including healing experiences. You can certainly uh, change the quality of life around healing. You're doing a lot of good. So you do completely affect the quality of one's life around the type of healing uh, you get involved in, whether it's you or you're performing on somebody else. That's all very true. And there are no accidents. So if somebody encounters a healer and they help them through a cancer process, that is all part of an integrated life path purpose for the patient, the healer, doctors, friends and family. So all, we're all interconnected. So healing and, and healing practices are always very important. And they, they, are, they come from the love space in the universe and they do certainly affect uh, life lessons and quality of life. 44, hi, Sterling. 
Concerning pets, in my case, dogs, do we choose them? Do they choose us? Is it just random or can we all, can be all of the above? And do we reincarnate, I'm sorry, do they reincarnate with us? And if so, is there a timeline to coming back into our lives? Well, yes. I mean, we all uh, pre-select the animals that we're going to come down with. The animals select us. It's all part of the master plan. Uh, many times, even though animals are part of the angelic realm, they have a, some sort of an indirect connection with our unique soul family. Animals do reincarnate sometimes many cycles during a human's lifetime. Not always. Uh, whereas humans may reincarnate sometimes, you know, 50, 80, 100 year cycles. Animals can usually come back in a number of years or something very quickly if that's part of the life purpose. Uh, it's not always the case. Many times individuals think that an animal reincarnates in their life. And what's really happening is that it's another animal coming into their life, maybe with some similar qualities, but different life lessons. 43, wondering if the current eruption in Iceland will eventually reach the coast anytime soon. It does look that way to me, uh, that it will continue to erupt and will reach the coast. Looks like plenty of notice. Uh, I'm not familiar with that exact area of Iceland, but I think uh, when you go out to the coast there, that that runs across a city, and I forget the name of the city. Yeah, it's all, it's coming over the next few months here, but it somehow looks like the authorities have it well enough organized that there isn't a big loss of life. No, it looks like it's you know, generally, uh, it's going to be okay. Okay, 42 in the countdown. Hi, Sterling and team, and thank you for all you do for us. Sunday, I was driving home on a four-lane divide road. A car came out of a side street, never stopped, and was heading at my passenger door. I could see the driver's face. I sped up but couldn't swerve because of other traffic. There was no way he didn't hit me, but he didn't. Another driver came alongside and waved to see if I was okay. I gave him a thumbs up, and he put up his fingers to show how little... The other car missed me by. I was actually pretty calm and felt a strong presence around me like one of my brothers. Who saved me and is there a message for me in this? A perfect example, this is one of your birth angels stepping in to save you. So family members don't typically step in to save you. They're around you, but this is the job. But this is exactly what birth angels do. They keep you on your path uh, and prevent any major harm from coming for you if that's not part of your life path. So you're asking what the message was. The message was for you to validate uh, and confirm and believe that you have birth angels around you and guides, but this is a perfect example of them stepping in to help you. 41, are 45's attorneys advising him of the danger he is doing to his defense, or are they just placating him at this point? You know what? I feel like they're advising him, but a lot of frustration around the attorneys. So I, it's still a revolving door for him in terms of attorneys. Um, no, I don't believe they're placating him. I believe that they're trying to steer the ship a different direction, trying to you know help him navigate the problems he's having, which almost unnav can't navigate it. Uh, but I don't see them placating him. I do see them trying and then tremendous frustration and then leaving. It's many of them. 40, hi, Sterling and team. I've been feeling blocked when it comes to trusting the info I get from my spiritual gu guides or gifts for a while now. Uh, I stopped trusting my abilities. Do my guides have a message about this or even which Claire I could focus on? I experienced them all, not sure which is my primary one. Well, for, whoever asked this question, um, Claire audience is one that we can all develop. And so you have, you have Claire audience ability. I also get, you have a knowingness, uh, that's Claire cognizant. I get that. Uh, which means you're a bit of an empath. I don't get, you have clairvoyant ability. So that's a little bit different way to build that out, but I would definitely start focusing on uh, managing your Claire cognizance, your knowingness and Claire audience, your ability here. So uh, practice makes perfect. There's a skill like learning, like becoming a, an expert professional musician. It's, it's practice makes perfect to build that muscle memory. You'll get there. 39, why did extraterrestrials stop openly interacting with humans as they did in ancient times, such as Egypt? Well, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens, which were the recipient of a lot of the extraterrestrial information, um, they didn't take a lot of the information seriously, you know, and and so th there was a there was a time lag there where extraterrestrial groups felt they needed humanity to evolve more. It's almost like 
Unfortunately, use this analogy, like you get a new puppy, it takes a while to train them, get them to a point where now you can walk them outside. Kind of an interesting analogy, but, you know, uh, maybe the extraterrestrial species are millions of years ahead of us. And so they stopped all the uh, overt communication, started more covert communication with a lot of people. Uh, and so the, the, that that's really, so this is the time, but that's why they kind of stopped uh, with a lot of the help they were giving because it wasn't, it wasn't going the right direction, including things like the Ark of the Covenant, which was a nuclear power source, uh, but humanity started to use that as a weapon in war. So I think a lot of, a lot of extraterrestrial groups said, we're going to pass on this for right now. We're going to let some time go by uh, and we'll, we'll re-engage later. 38. I hear a lot about spirits being trapped here among the living. Is this true or just a product of sensationalism? No, spirits are never actually trapped here in the universe. As we all pass on, we all move through. A lot of people call it a tunnel of light. You engage with your birth angels. Everybody transitions. Uh, there is a life review, but you're not trapped here on Earth. Many times people feel like I need they want to come back in a spiritual form to visit places that maybe think questions were unanswered or they they felt the comfort level. But uh, really, spirits are not trapped. Uh, and I hear that a lot. So uh, also a word of warning, you know, if, if you work with other professionals out there and they're trying to tell you your loved one's trapped and, you know, involved in a lot of uh, anger and anxiety and they can't move on, it's not usually the case. So when you step over into an entire environment of love, you learn the lessons, you acknowledge the lessons very, very quickly, you move on. Uh, but life review could take a little while. 37, in the 1960s, my family and I were traveling from Northeast Mississippi to Arkansas. My sister, brother, and I were in the back of our homemade camper. My parents began seeing a disc-shaped object in the sky behind us. It followed us for quite a while until my dad became frightened and stopped and got, got us out of the camper and put us in the cab of the truck with them. The next day, in the news, there were sightings in many places, uh, even making it into the World Book Encyclopedia that year. Were these extraterrestrials? Yes, these were uh, extraterrestrials moving through the area into a military base area. So they said they were traveling northeast, a uh, disc-shaped object. Uh, yeah. Um, this looks like the, these were shuttle ships. So these are a little bit larger, uh, but these are shuttles that move between motherships and a lot of military bases. They move people back and forth. So that's what you witnessed. 36, what signs help us know that we are on the right path that we charted for our soul's growth? And can we renegotiate our soul's contract while on earth, or is it set in stone? You know, synchronicity is one of the best ways to determine if you're on our life path. When things, when you're actually standing in a flow and things start to work, um, the opposite of that is if you keep trying something over and over again and the door keeps getting slammed in your face, that's the opposite of synchronicity. The universe is trying to give you a message. So what the, you know, I would say staying in the flow and allowing things to happen uh, is a good way to get confirmations from the universe. Um, you know, that even includes getting fired from a job. A lot of people, it's a very dramatic occurrence. But when you get fired from a job, it's a very clear message from the universe. It's time to move on. So these are all part, but you know the, we have to look for the signals, the signposts along the way. Um, see who calls you out of the blue, for example. You get a phone call that you didn't talk to in 10 years. Uh, these are all messages that, okay, you're moving along the right path. 35. Hi, Sterling and team. We are really struggling here in Romania with LGBTQ plus rights, especially in getting married and being recognized. Can you please tell me if the law for acknowledging gay partnership will be approved? Uh, if yes, when? You know, I, I don't see this happening for at least another eight to 10 years in Romania. So it looks like there's a real political uh there's a real uh, a real wave in that area of the world against uh, LGBTQ uh, marriage rights. Uh, so not, that's what they're telling me. So you're really going to have to wait another eight to 10 years, unfortunately, here before it really starts to be wholly acceptable in that area of society. Um, so it's, it's a little while to go here, but uh, it, it'll get there. They will get there, absolutely. 34, hi, Sterling. What do you see in the future for regarding the influence corporations have on politics using money? They seem to be buying our politicians and courts. Do you see an end in this soon? Well, uh, yeah, this is a problem that's going to take another two decades. So it's more like the year 2044 before all this really gets resolved in many areas around the world. 
But it looks like uh, the tracking of money is going to be much easier uh, to a lot of new financial systems. You'll be able to understand where money's flowing. There'll be new limits placed on the way corporations can uh, fund certain candidates. And I see this around the world. This is starting to, start to happen around the world. But fully, it's going to take about two decades for this to be become a reality. You know, there's a progression up to that point. Uh, but it's coming. It's coming. 33, high sterling uh, breast implant illness uh, is not recognized as a disease by most doctors, but it affects so many women. Do you see doctors recognizing breast implant illness? And will insurance companies begin to cover the uh, explant or removal surgery? You know, um, I, this looks like it's going to happen rather quickly, like within five years to me that a lot of doctors, I actually see already, a lot of doctors are telling me, already do acknowledge this. I know a person said the doctors are acknowledging it. It looks like a lot of doctors already are acknowledging it, trying to get their arms around it, trying to quantify it. And then insurance companies, is, they're going to lag behind a little bit, uh, but it looks like it's coming uh, up to a head here. Within five years, it's really going to be acknowledged. So look for that uh right around the year, 2029, something like that. could be 2028. Um, it's coming, absolutely. Uh, 32, oh, by the way, my team's just reminding me, it looks like whatever this is, uh, breast, what are they calling again? Sorry, uh, breast implant illness is actually now going to be acknowledged worldwide. So it's, it's a worldwide trend happening here. So I think I think that that's good news, good news for this condition. Okay, 32 in the countdown. Hello, Sterling, Linda, and team. Can you please provide insight on the upcoming governor election in Washington State? Will the current Democratic Attorney General Bob Ferguson win over Republican candidate Dave Reichert? I get Bob Ferguson. Uh, Bob Ferguson is the current AG. Is that what they just said here? Uh, uh, current uh, uh, Democratic Attorney General. It looks like that individual, Bob Ferguson, will win, what they're telling me. 31, through the years, smoking has become prohibitive, uh, prohibited in most public areas, but unfortunately, some states still allow it in certain places, such as clubs, bars, and casinos. Will there someday be a national law banning smoking in all public places? If so, when? I, I get a complete ban, uh, at least around the U.S., by 2034. Interesting. So that's uh, about 10 years out. Number 30, Hi, Sterling and team. My 26-year-old daughter has had severe pain in her right abdomen since April. Uh, she has had every test with every specialist we can think of, and nothing is determined to be the cause. She is almost at her wit's end. She sees another new doctor on the 22nd of this month. Does your team have any suggestions as to which direction to guide the doctor that would help her get some relief? I always have to say I'm not a doctor, uh, but what I get around this is uh, is a parasite. There's some type of parasite here. So I'm not sure if your daughter has uh, consumed any kind of a I'll call it a foreign food or traveled internationally, but uh, there's a parasite that's been ingested and it's, I guess they call it gastrointestinal. So I would definitely seek out a doctor that's familiar with parasites, have them run some tests. I, I'm getting that this is a parasitic condition here. So again, not a doctor, uh, but I hope that gives you a little bit of you know guidance and maybe some additional tests that can be run. 29, how many years before there is a noticeable difference in U.S. traffic safety and less congestion with self-driving cars on the roads? You know, this also happens within about 10 years by about 2034, but it's only a majority of cars uh, will be installed with autopilot. They will also use artificial intelligence and navigation systems. So effectively, cars will drive themselves, but with a lot of safety guidelines, a lot of systems, and supercomputers in the back-end network controlling. So you got about, got about 10 years here, 2034, but that's only due to autopilot, artificial intelligence, a lot of these systems being rolled out um, in, into transportation systems and cars. 28, hi, Sterling Linden team. I know you've said that we get to choose how we want to look in the afterlife. If one has had 90 lifetimes, 90 different appearances, and 90 sets of loved ones, how would they be recognized and would they be greeted by loved ones uh, every lifetime after they return to heaven? Well, most individuals look similar to the most recent lifetime they lived. But you have to remember, when you get on the other side, 
you recognize everybody. You can still see what looks like a human image, but you recognize them by what I call, I call it a soul QR code. And those are those, you know, the QR codes are the things you can aim your mobile device at your mobile phone, brings up a website right away. It's like a, a soul DNA QR code. So you recognize individuals in your unique soul family. So it's all not based on looks. Now, many times individuals may cross over into heaven. Maybe they were a man on earth. When they cross over, they want to appear as a woman, as they did maybe five, six lifetimes ago. Uh, your family will still recognize you. It's that soul DNA footprint they recognize right away. 27. Hi, Sterling. Did extraterrestrials station here on Earth pay any attention to the April 8th solar eclipse that affect their movements between Earth and wherever they were traveling to? Uh, no effect whatsoever on extraterrestrial species. Uh, this is more like planetary engagement. Um, they understand how to, you know, uh, if there's a navigation required due to, you know, planetary movement, they understand how to do that. Uh, but uh, this is primarily a, a, just a planetary event, event and no effect whatsoever on extraterrestrial species. 26, I sterling a few years back when I was very ill and suffering greatly from a parasite I picked up while living in Florida Keys. I plead with my guys and angels or any positive entity that could help for healing. That night, I had a lucid dream of talking to a very tall being with a funny-looking head. I don't remember what was said, but I do remember getting a bit defensive over something that he said. The next morning, I was healed of the pain, uh, as well as the obvious physical symptoms uh, all but gone. Was this an extraterrestrial? Is it common for them to help us in our sleep? Uh, this is actually one of your birth angels helping you, and extraterrestrials can help behind the scenes. They don't directly get involved in healing necessarily. They, they do in some cases if it's part of your life path. So, for example, something you're supposed to be healed of is supposed to carry forward in a in a health uh, a health science breakthrough to help humanity. They'll absolutely get involved. But these are your guides and angels. They also get even some ascended masters here coming in to help you. But it's because you reached you reached out. And some sort of, you know, the intention was very strong. That's why you got all this extra support. 25, uh, a few videos prior, you mentioned that we are all star seeds. My question is, is blood type linked with star seed origin? Some people claim if you have a certain blood type, you are a particular star system. Even saying that if you have O plus blood, you are from Earth, a star Earth, not a star seed. Is there any truth to this theory? I am O plus, so I'm from, am I from planet Earth? Do you know if I'm a star seed? What our star system am I from? A lot of questions there. Yeah, we're all star seeds. We all originate from other star systems. Uh, so uh, nobody technically originated from Earth. Uh, we all originate from other stars. We're all star seeds I'm going back millions of years ago. Um, no, uh, blood type does not correspond directly to your origin. In fact, blood types will change many times through successive reincarnations and even evolution of blood types here on Earth. So the blood types are not directly connected with being extraterrestrial or a specific star system, not whatsoever. You know, a lot of times people, I think they bring up, I think, RH negative, and they say, am I extraterrestrial because of RH negative? No, it's actually just part of an evolution here on Earth uh, to help create that. And there's other new blood types coming. In fact, I think a new blood type coming, I've heard, is C. C is in cat, believe it or not. It hasn't appeared yet. Uh, but it's coming. So it, it's no, it's not a direct connection with uh, a star system, but we all are star seeds. We all originated uh, from various star systems. 24, hi, Sterling team. A YouTuber named Darius J. Wright teaches control out of body near death. He says that we are in a matrix like construct. And one of his earlier experiences mentioned that he ended up in hell and he told himself that he was tired of being in hell and that, and it was done. Then his spirit was released from hell. Are we really in a matrix-like structure and are the real demonic forces that we try to control uh, as mentioned in the Bible real? So I'll be, I'll be straight ahead. Uh, none of the assertions here are true. Um, we're not living in a matrix environment. We're actually in a linear time environment. 3D, uh, three three dimensional. The fourth dimension is time. Time is linear here, uh, but we're not living in the matrix environment. And no, there's not hell. There isn't a hell. Uh, a lot of people, you know, when you go through a life review, if you've done a lot of things on Earth that have been, you know, somewhat questionable and really uh, 
you know, very low level, let's just say, uh, the life review can be a rather uh, daunting task, but there is no hell. Everybody is is allowed to move on, grow through the experiences. So uh, my team is just saying in regards to what's being described here, um, it really isn't any real truth in those assertions. My guides do not resonate with this information being factual. I guess that's a good way to put it. 23, from the time I was very little girl, about four years old, I can remember trying to collect stuff to build a spaceship to go home. I was always felt like I was from another planet. Whatever places people don't look like us, uh, they transport and fly. Is that possible? And if so, are there others out there like me and will I ever find out the truth? Again, so we're all from star systems. Uh, when you kind of connect with uh, past lives, and even if you do it just tangentially, a lot of times people will feel homesick for wherever they came from or wherever they came from heaven most recently. You know, so th that's all very typical. I'll tell you that a large part of the population will feel somewhat homesick or they came from a star system or they remember, you know, some past lives. So it's kind of a common theme here through the show, talking about somewhat remembrance of past lives and where we came from. But uh, uh, you're, you're whoever asked this question, you're destined to be here right now on Earth at this time for very specific life lessons. 22 is the Grand Canyon a portal. Many years ago, my husband was driving me to the Grand Canyon. I started to get really sick and weak when we got in about one mile from the Grand Canyon. Uh, that, And when we got there, I was so weak, I could hardly get out of the car. We didn't stay very long and left very quickly. After he drove about a mile away from the Grand Canyon, I bounced back. Uh, it was an energetic thing that I couldn't explain. What was it? Uh, well, there are several points around the Grand Canyon that have portals. The so Grand Canyon itself is not a portal. Portals have very uh, discrete, descript uh, areas. Uh, if you look at like northern Utah, Skinwalker Ranch, it's a very large scale uh, portal goes up hundreds of feet in the sky. You're sensitive energetically. So a lot of energy, you know, when you have portals, uh, those are very large energy vortexes, energy centers around the earth. So you're very, you're actually affected by that. It's very typical for a lot of people. If you get around areas of very high magnetic field energy, you'll feel it. And vortexes are really nothing more than it's at the center. If you see a swirling magnetic field, a vortex is more or less kind of what, what's inside. But you, you felt a lot of that magnetic field energy, not necessarily that you were coming close to a portal. There are several portals around the Grand Canyon, though. 21, can we reincarnate in the past as well as the future since there's no time? I talk about this all the time. So time is linear here on Earth. It's non-linear on the other side. That's because that dimension moves faster than the speed of light. When you move faster than the speed of light, time becomes non-linear. So first off, there is time. Time's just linear on Earth, non-linear in the other dimensions. Um, no, you, you cannot come back. You can only come back at a forward time to Earth. So if you left in the 1950s, you can't reincarnate in the 1910, uh, so or the 1800s, for example. Uh, you have you come back in a linear fashion when you reincarnate after the time you left Earth. Now on the other side, you can certainly see you can go backwards and forwards in time and view all sorts of things, but you can't reincarnate uh, unless it's a time that's forward. And I think that's what they're asking here, in the past or the future. Yeah. I mean, you effectively do come back in the future. It's it's past the date when you left, but you can't necessarily jump ahead. Uh, well, I mean, you, you pick where you come back, let's put it that way. So hopefully that helps. Okay, 20 in the countdown. Hi, Sterling. I'm interested in hearing any insights from you and your team about the origin of Rh negative blood in humans. We were just talking about that. It's a manipulation that only about 15% of people have today on Earth, and there are many theories about how it may have been introduced into Homo sapiens sapiens in ancient times. So th this blood uh, type has been completely evolved uh, through a lot of extraterrestrial uh, activity. It's complete evolution. And if you look at um, Homo sapiens sapien, I think you have to look at things like uh, hominids, which I think part of the ape family, and hominins, uh, which are part of the larger... Uh, family of Homo sapiens sapiens, but it's remember we're all we all start out as star seeds. Uh, so, but the Rh negative blood is really just part of a natural evolution of humanity. Nineteen, hi Sterling and your amazing team, love your show. My question is regarding polycystic kidney disease (PKD). My brother-in-law suffered from it, as did his mother. My BIL received a kidney. I don't know if there's maybe a brother received a kidney transplant 26 years ago and is doing well. I guess brother-in-law, maybe that's what that is. 
His son has the gene, but is not exhibiting symptoms yet. Unfortunately, it has been passed on to his one-year-old daughter. Will there be a cure found for this disease in the near future? You know, I, I get this is already something being worked on with gene editing technology. There'll be a full cure within two decades for this. Again, not a doctor. My team's saying that you can actually start to research or, or Google or search out uh, CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R technology. And it looks like you know, in two decades, there'll be a few, uh, really a full cure for this, is what my team's saying. 18, hi, Sterling and team. Thanks for all you do to help enlighten us earthlings. My question is, do you see my homeland of Guyana in South America being under threat of flooding in their future? Most of my family lives there on the coastland. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I get this is very low-lying coastal area, whatever this is, not directly familiar with it, but it does look like there's flooding events already occurred and many more flooding events coming up. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is an area to be concerned about uh, going forward here. So I think a lot of authorities, a lot of people will start to be uh, very cautious and plan. But this this is this is actually an area that's uh, very much under risk of flooding. I think that's what we're asking about. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. 17. Hello, Sterling. What do your guides and angels think about tapping therapy? Can it effectively get you back into balance? It can. You know, I'm not a doctor, uh, but what I get with tapping therapy, it has a lot of similarities to acupuncture. So that is like it, phys it physically affects meridians in the body. So where tapping is kind of physically, you know, using your fingers or your hands, acupuncture is using needles. But yes, for some reason, my team's saying that it does affect the meridian response in the body. And so tapping uh, can be very, very effective at helping uh, with many different types of things. Again, not a doctor here, but I'm even hearing it might affect with certain types of stage fright, PTSD, uh, a number of things here. Yeah, absolutely. 16. Oh, they're also telling me it will help with uh, like blocked energy flow. So sometimes if you have uh, traumatic experiences in your life, you might harbor them in certain areas of the body. 16. Hello from home of the Red Rock, Sedona, Arizona. From, from my home in Red Rock, Sedona, Arizona, will the number of Airbnbs be reduced? Right now, over 40% of Sedona's population has been reduced at, at the last sentence. So they're asking about Red Rocks, Arizona, and they're talking about, oh, about Sedona. Oh, got it. I, you know, I don't see any real relief here uh, for a good number of eight years, something like that. Um it does look to me like more controls, laws are going to be put in place in Red Rock, Arizona. So I'm not sure if there's like, I don't know, an hour's drive from Sedona. I don't I have a map in front of me right now. But it looks like a lot of controls already have been placed around Airbnb regulation like Sedona. And so maybe similar regulation coming to Red Rock, Arizona. But they're saying it's like an eight-year process here for this to all kind of, you know, uh, recalibrate, uh, get better. 15, hi, Sterling. What will happen on Monday in regards to 45's hush money trial? I, I see the trial moving forward with normal jury selection. Um, I don't see, I see 45, you know, acting out. I do see that. I see that he's going to be in court. Uh, so I see it looks like the trial is going to move ahead somewhat normally. Uh, a few fits and spurts here, and it looks like there'll be some surprise witnesses. I do get all that, yeah. But it looks like it's mostly going to move forward here at a good, at a good pace. 14, will Tesla solve autonomous driving? I've watched mobility issues affect older relatives. I think it would be a game changer for the elderly. Yes, we talked about this during the show. Uh, a lot of the auto manufacturers will eventually uh, get very good quality autonomous driving systems, also working with artificial intelligence and supercomputers on the back end. 13, hello, Sterling. Is it true that souls are not at peace until they have a final resting place like urns of ashes uh, that have not been claimed by family? Uh, no real truth to these assertions. Uh, once you leave your your earthly body, your completely, soul is completely free and moves on. It really does not look back. Uh, you know, obviously you can see what's happening on earth here, but it's no truth to not being at peace. Uh, you really have no connection to the earthly body anymore. So I know that question comes up a lot. And I think it's important for people to hear that, that, you know, I, I talk with thousands of people on the other side. They move on in a space of love. They're happy to see family members, friends, colleagues, you know, uh, spouses, people they hadn't seen for a long time. And they, they're really not 
ever concerned about uh, the earthly remains. I know it, it, humanity is really going to grow through this and really kind of understand from a spiritual perspective that they really don't have any connection. Now, relatives or people on the other side, they want us to be happy. So th I do see that. So if, if some reason somebody here on earth in a family, very stressed out about not being able to kind of put a loved one at rest, they, they want love and light for family members here on earth. But it does not stop our loved ones on their side from not moving on, not completely starting a brand new life. 12. Question for Sterling and the team. I'm a retired college teacher with thousands of past students. I have been extremely concerned when many of my students who see shadow people or have other experiences are put on antipsychotic medication. Uh, these medications appear to make them seem like an unfeeling zombie. The meds are so severe that getting off them requires hospitalization. Will this practice change? It was painful to experience a witness. You know, the, the practice is going to change as humanity starts to understand spirituality a little bit more. So a lot of the shadow people that some of your students are seeing um, actually are apparitions or they're people on the other side. So it's, I, I've seen kind of evolution over the years here of, into spirituality and away from trying to uh, handle this with medication. So yeah, I do see um, that this is all part of, you know, remember this whole big three decade reset process we're going through here. But for this question here, it looks like... Uh, Within the next 10 years, a lot of this is going to shift over to more spiritual understanding and say, wait a minute, before we prescribe drugs, let's see if there isn't a spiritual path, a spiritual understanding. Could they be seeing a, a, a past loved one in the family? 11. Hello, Sterling and team. Can you add a little more information? Are all extraterrestrials bipedal? Do ETs have similar sleep cycles as us or have their bodies adapted to sleep? Uh, you know, nearly all ET species are bipedal, which means they walk on two legs. That's true. Uh, a lot of them don't need any more than a couple of hours sleep a night, four hours of sleep, something like that. They get very, very efficient. Their bodies uh, manage uh, the ingestion of food and energy much more efficiently than uh, humanity does, Homo sapiens sapien. Uh, but yeah, there many of them, the majority of them are bipedal. They actually walk on two legs. Ten. My father was an avid airplane enthusiast since he was a young man. Shortly after he passed, I walked outside, looked up in the sky, saw a cloud that was the perfect shape of an airplane with landing gear included. I was able to summon others to come see it and took pictures. Can you please tell me if this was a message from him? It's absolutely a heavenly message from your father to try to let you know he was okay. I love you. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Absolutely an affirming message from your father. Nine, hello, Sterling and team. When I was 12 years old, I was walking home from school and had to cross a catwalk to get home. I remember approaching the bridge and getting a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach and saw a man on the bridge from a distance. When I got closer, he was still there and he started limping towards me and asked me to help him with his leg. I shook my head, no, and I didn't know what to do. There was a man on the other side of the bridge walking his dog and he yelled up to me and asked me if I was okay or if this man was bothering me. I remember shaking my head, yes, and he said he would watch over me. I ran past the man and all the way home as fast as I could. I still wonder to this day, was this an earth angel, a birth angel, or just a lucky coincidence? Uh, this was simply a helpful human uh, seeing you in your time of need. But, you know, these things are put in your path. But a lot of times they're angels and guides. So they'll move people into your path. It wasn't a birth angel in this case. But, but you know, somebody, they apparently received the message to say, look up or look out. Somebody needs your help. And uh, so this is all part of the way the universe works. Eight, high Sterling and team. We have earthly ancestors. We share earthly DNA. When we cross over, why do they matter? I have factual knowledge of some great grand relatives who have passed on. I feel absolutely no connection to them, nor any parents or siblings who have passed away 10 years ago and not keen on meeting them, uh, no abuse. Earthly contract only, how important are our ancestors when we cross over? Well, I mean, everyone that's down here that you're connecting with is part of your unique soul family. Now there are thousands of members on the other side. So when you cross back over, uh, you understand that. You also understand everybody plays a role down here on Earth. So when you come down here, a lot of your unique soul families may, in fact, uh, play roles as uh, you know step parents, uh, husbands, spouses, children, stepchildren, 
uh, ancestors. You know, they all play. You all play a role, and the role is meant to teach you a life lesson. But when you cross over, you understand it's all part of a larger, unique soul family. You don't always see those individuals as, for example, your parents. You may see them as an acknowledgement of another type of soul. As a matter of fact, uh, many times I see uh, individuals come down. Like your mother in this lifetime may in fact been a sibling or a sister for you in a prior lifetime. So we actually do change roles when we come down. Okay, seven the countdown. Hi, Australian team. Emil, two years old, disappeared last summer from a small village in France after staying with his grandparents for a holiday. His remains were found in the area several days ago on March 30th, 2024. Can you see what happened to this little boy? It, it appears he got stuck and then like went down an embankment. Uh, it looks like the death was caused by some trauma that is uh, physically falling. So getting out of the house through like an open door, something here, um, doesn't look like foul play. But getting through an unlocked door and then I'm seeing like trapped and then falling down an embankment. Uh, so it's very unfortunate uh, but I, I want to send a lot of love and light out to Emil's family. But that, that's what my team's saying, what happened here. Does not look like foul play, if that's what they're asking. Six, Colorado voters approved a bill to reintroduce a woolly mammoth herd to the state. It is believed this will improve the ecosystem and control fires. A baby mammoth named Manny is alive and well at a scientific research center in Wyoming. An Asian elephant embryo and gene editing technology made it successful. Will the mammoth eventually be seen in Colorado? Yes, absolutely. A few years, like by 2030, a full herd. Uh, you know, I've read on this actually, I remember years ago, uh, people were asking about, will they reintroduce the woolly mammoth? And my team said, absolutely, yes. And I know some people at that time were saying, uh, that sounds like a crazy idea. Why would they do that? Well, my team was saying they're going to do it because it's going to benefit humanity. So whatever they're coming in to do here is going to benefit us from a genetic standpoint and from an earth standpoint. But yeah, they're, they're definitely, I see like a full herd uh, by 2030 in Colorado. Five, hi, Sterling. Can you tell us who murdered Diane Fossey? She spent her life studying mountain gorillas and was killed in December of 1985. Well, um, what I get on this was this is a premeditated murder, not random. It's not a random uh, murder. Premeditated, and I hate to use the, the term colleague, but somebody that had worked with her in the past, there's a jealousy from this individual. You know, the individual looks like a female to me. Um, and I, the authorities are going to be able to figure this out. Um, it looks to me like they might even get this solved next year. 2025. Very unfortunate. I mean, a wonderful Di Diane Fossey, a wonderful uh, person. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it looks like this is premeditated and I'm uh, getting like a competitive jealousy here that caused this. Four. Hi, Sterling. When I was a teenager, I used to see people that nobody else would. There was also a tall man. He was like a shadow. It was just a black figure. He would just watch me sleep. It would scare me. Could you please tell me who what, who this was and why he did this? Thank you so much. Also want to add that to this day, I still hear people and see shadows. My daughter's the same way. Well, the shadow person you were seeing uh, is connected to your family. It's a male figure connected. Uh, this is like on a, on a paternal side, a father's side. It's like a grandfather, great-grandfather. And so both you and your daughter are psychic. You have clairvoyant ability. You can actually see. Uh, but they're showing me that this is actually a member of your family. So I know it's like a shadow figure. If you work to develop the skill, you'll actually be able to uh, build that out eventually in what they call full-scale apparition. You'll be able to see who it is. Three, high string and team are cardinal special birds. When my husband was alive, he had a connection with cardinals. And in fact, we had one in our backyard that he named Gigi. He passed away now, but Gigi still comes around. One day she was in the house and it was impossible for her to get there because there were no doors or windows open. No one had left the house. No one opened a door. However, uh, there she was. So I opened the door and she wouldn't leave. I told her that we were all okay and that we missed my husband so much and that she and my husband could go in peace and they did was that a sign for my husband 
Yes, absolutely. This is a divine sign from your husband. Now, it looks like your husband was very connected to birds. You know, I think you're, were you mentioning that? Uh, yeah, real connection or cardinal birds. So your husband was able to utilize birds to kind of get the message across to you. Remember, your your loved ones don't ever become that animal. But animals, because they're part of the angelic realm, can easily carry messages forward from our loved ones. And because there's such a broad range of animals here you know, on Earth, a lot of times the specific animal uh, can give you another level of confirmation. So if your husband, again, was close to cardinals, as a cardinal coming around, then you know it. Uh, no, cardinals aren't any more special than other types of birds or eagles or whatnot, but it does connect with your loved one. That's why it went that way. And number two and number one in the countdown, I always take notes before the show, so I'll read some of those back to you right now. Uh, number two, do you see anything coming up this week? Uh, new spacecraft and ET objects are going to be picked up by the James Webb Telescope, uh, creating excitement across the scientific community. New valuable discussion regarding a ceasefire in Gaza. So I see a ceasefire coming up. I think we might be a week to two weeks away from that. So uh, really significant substantive discussions around a ceasefire coming up uh, for Israel and Gaza. Now, it's not going to be permanent, but it's going to be significant. Uh, and by the way, it also released, I was talking about this earlier, to a small number of hostages will get released in the process. Uh, new volcanic eruptions coming in Hawaii. I don't see a lot of loss of life, but there's some new volcanic eruptions coming up. It's kind of interesting. Uh, new 45 trial information released this week relative to hush money trial and also the two federal cases. And I, it looks like there's some surprise witnesses coming up in the hush money trial as well, ones that haven't been talked about or discussed. Um and then some small wins for Jack Smith this week, it looks like, in keeping some of those cases moving forward. So kind of a very uh, very busy week. And number one, the countdown. Do you have anything your guides want to share? Keep the faith you were born with and get back to a simpler time when you understood that the complexities we create in life only serve to slow us down. Everything simply functions from a place of love or fear. That's it. So on that note, that concludes the show. We're being recorded here today for Sunday, April 14th, 2024. As always, you need to reach me, go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com, look for the Book of Session tab. Again, we have a new Platinum membership level. If you're, you're welcome to join that, go to our YouTube homepage. You'll see the Join key or our website homepage. You'll see a button uh, that'll take you right to the YouTube membership page. So wonderful spending time with you again. Uh, going to send out a lot of goodwill and tremendous love to you and your families. Take care. I'll see you all again very soon.